Images of extraterrestrial beings depicted in bas reliefs can be found in many corners of our planet. It's safe to say that Mexico, Peru and Latin American countries are abundant with such discoveries. This artifact was discovered in March 2017 near the city of Veracruz in Mexico. In one of the caves within the forest, jade stones with mysterious carvings were found, depicting humanoid creatures with large heads. They resemble the great aliens or the Apexians. And there are numerous findings like this. For instance, this collection of reliefs, masks and tablets was unearthed inside one of the temples in Mexico. It has been considered as evidence of the Mayans' contact with extraterrestrial beings. People organized special expeditions to explore places of apparent polar contact and study these discoveries. One of these researchers is the Mexican shaman Paulino Martinez. He agreed to give us an interview, during which he shared his findings. I live in the city of Guadalajara, Jalisco, Mexico, about 30 kilometers away from Lake Chapala, one of the largest lakes in Latin America. It's also a place where sightings of extraterrestrial spacecrafts are reported frequently. There's much talk about the Jalisco area, because the lake spans several states. There is an active extraterrestrial base in the area of Jalisco and Michoacan. Many sightings of spacecraft have been reported, and I was invited because I was gifted this piece the one I'm holding in my hand, and they asked me, do you want to see where you can find more of these pieces? I said, yes, I am interested in joining the expedition. They said, we want your help, because energetically, the energy of this place, there are paranormal occurrences and unexplainable phenomena in this area. And we've discovered many symbols, and we've also found some stele. The stele and engraved jade tablets with symbols and images that don't belong to this planet. So we want to know your opinion. When they showed me these findings, I couldn't believe it. Having them right in front of me, I was astonished by the symbols and the symbolism behind them. I couldn't believe the story that was manifested in the symbols. These pieces were a shock as soon as I saw them. And first, I want to tell you what I said. How? How is this even possible? And then, as we continued the expedition, Things started getting dangerous for us and the people funding it, because the area where these pieces are found is the area in Mexico, controlled by paramilitary groups involved in drug trafficking and other illicit businesses. At some point, our lives and the lives of those funding the expedition were threatened by people who didn't want us to take or reveal anything we had discovered. We managed to gather evidence and rescue some pieces. We took them for analysis and the results were incredible. But the most incredible part is that this story is engraved on some stele we have found. These stele are highly valuable, not just because of the symbols carved on them. They are valuable because they are made of jade, a very expensive material that is even sold by the carrot in the international market. 
we found items of jade weighing tons. So our amazement stems not only from the significance of the discovery of the symbols, but also because these stones themselves are incredibly valuable. In this relief, there is an image of 14 extraterrestrial figures standing in a circle, holding hands. The gazes of the 13 participants forming the circle are directed towards the central figure, suggesting that it plays a special role in this process. In the center of the circle, there are two figures. One is presumably a human, shaman, and the other has a head resembling the ancient Egyptian god Anubis. The shaman and the Anubis-like creature are holding staffs in their hands. Within the circle, we can also see two symbols indicating that the shaman is transferring energy to the Anubis-like being. Additionally, there are two more figures within the circle with heads resembling that of Anubis. Outside the circle, there are four more extraterrestrial figures of a slightly different type, with their hands raised in front of them. At the top corners, there are depictions of extraterrestrial spaceships. The entire funerary monument is framed by two serpents, showing representations of energies in the form of waves. It is presumed that in this way, extraterrestrial beings were gathering energy from humans during a ritualistic act. This is a stele that we found on top of a tomb. On top of a tomb, there was a skeleton, a very large one, larger than ordinary, with an elongated skull. I have to admit, at first I couldn't believe it. We conducted numerous examinations and run tests, it was incredibly mind-boggling for me. Even now, I haven't finished studying it, because it defies logic. I mean, it doesn't fit within the rational framework of what we know and our understanding of history. I believe this discovery has the potential to change many aspects of human history not just in our country. There have been some very significant findings in various areas, and it gives us a strong indication that we are not alone in the universe. What Paulina just mentioned about the funerary monuments is actually a treasure trove of invaluable findings that convey evident information like a clear guidebook. The key lies in learning how to read it. Another equally astonishing discovery was made in the south of Egypt in 2016. During renovation work on an ancient building, ancient coins. On one side of these coins, there's a head resembling an extraterrestrial being, while the other side depicts a hovering spacecraft Almost all these coins have inscriptions in Latin, suggesting that they were minted not in Egypt, but elsewhere. Now, hold on a second. As we know from history, only rulers were featured on coins. Every king and emperor wanted to imprint their image not only in statues and paintings, but also on minted coins. Why would a king or queen have their image on a coin? In fact, just as they do today on paper money. First, it was to let everyone in the state know who was in charge, who held the power. Second, it was a way to elevate their sense of grandeur. And finally, most importantly, spreading their image was a means to siphon human life energy, the power of real. For by investing attention in an image, we willingly transfer a part of our attention to its owner. Let's take a look at how rulers indulged themselves throughout history.
the list goes on and on. As we can see, stamping the image of an emperor or a king on coins was quite common. Each one who reached the heights of power aimed to disseminate their image and assert their dominance, as it was formally said, who's the boss in the house. So what does this imply? Was the image of an alien creature that clearly resembles the Apexians featured on coins not done by coincidence? It was not accidental, right? Have you ever seen regular people, peasants or workers depicted on coins of banknotes. No. Fascinating, isn't it? Who's hiding behind the veil of secrecy throughout millennia? Who left their legacy here and contributes to collect tribute to this day? Because, as we have understood, only selected, revered individuals, those at the pinnacle of power, are depicted on such significant objects as money. So who do we venerate? This creature bears a striking resemblance to what we call the Greys, or more specifically, the Apexians. Millennia ago, when the Apexians ruled over Earth, they established a planetary religion of human sacrifices to gods who have blue blood. In these religions, warriors were prisoners, children and women were offered as sacrifices. By the way, the bus reliefs discovered in one of Mexico's temples vividly depict the human sacrifice process. Note. Not only are there extraterrestrial beings, but also humans present. Apparently, these are priests who participated in human sacrifice rituals. By the way, it was these bas reliefs and masks which were found in the interior of the temple in Mexico that were regarded as evidence of the mind's contact with extraterrestrial beings. And we know how the minds were a bloodthirsty civilization, which implies that the knowledge of these bloody sacrifices was transmitted by the Apexians. When the Apexians departed, they left behind priests who continued the tradition of sacrifices. They still carry out these rituals to this day. We see these priests portrayed on coins and more. 
the image in his pants centuries. They struck a deal. By selling themselves, they gained power. Thus, they doomed peoples to suffering and distorted beyond recognition the primary purpose of human life, for the sake of which each of us comes to this world to become an angel, a living being. However, to obtain power, the priests were given secret knowledge on how to achieve it. They must forever lock away their conscience in the freezer and perform acts of human sacrifice. What does this action achieve? It's all connected to the physics of subtle energies. Through satanic rituals of sacrifice, the demon within the priest who has committed it is reinforced by the collected life energy of the victim. And it is this well-fed demon in this priest, in the ruler, that compels wicked demons in the minds of other people, under the said ruler, to obey. The weaker submit to the stronger. In the invisible world, there exists a clear demonic hierarchy, and every demon seeks to ascend to the pinnacle of power. It doesn't matter whether it's a minor demon or one with significant power and consequently greater authority. And the more power it gains, the more insatiable it becomes, is the law. The technique of sacrifices is kept in the strictest secrecy, and that's no surprise. After all, it concerns power, power over the world and people's minds. Therefore, information of this kind doesn't extend beyond a very narrow circle of humans, or more precisely now, in humans. And that's understandable. But even those who appear to be at the pinnacle of power are in reality slaves, who also pay tribute to their master, Satan, and to his intermediary, the Apexians, those who brought this instrument of sacrifice and power here. But again, they are just intermediaries at this insane feast. They receive a mere 10%, while the lion's share of 90% goes to the system, the system of the animal mind. Система животного разума.